Once we know the Gleason score of the patient, we then try to classify them the best that we can. And the way that we look at that is primarily we look at the PSA. The higher the PSA, we then will classify that patient as a higher risk. And the way you want to think about this is that as that PSA increases, there is a higher risk that that prostate cancer has potentially gotten outside of the prostate and potentially elsewhere in the body. So it's very, very important. The PSA continues to remain a very, very helpful tool for us to evaluate that cancer. And of course, the second thing we looked at, which we talked about, is the Gleason score. So, if you are a patient who actually has a lower grade prostate cancer, which again, we described as a Gleason 6, and your PSA is low, meaning it's less than 10, statistically, the chances that your cancer has gotten outside of the prostate and beyond into the lymph nodes and even beyond into the bones is extremely low. And so, a majority of the time, we do not recommend that we do a further, what we call a metastatic workup. And that metastatic workup routinely includes a bone scan and either an MRI or a CAT scan to evaluate whether we see any questionable areas that could show cancer potentially in the lymph nodes in the pelvis where one of the early stages where prostate cancer gets outside. So again, so early stage or low risk, you know, for those patients with prostate cancer, routinely we will tell them that the chances that this cancer is getting outside of this, again, is very low. And then we go forward and we say, let's try to help you make a decision based on your prostate cancer that we found on here. Now, let's take the opposite end of the spectrum. Let's say a patient comes in and his, patient, his PSA is 25. And let's also say that when we biopsied that patient, he actually has a Gleason 8 or a Gleason 9 prostate cancer. Now, that patient is at higher risk. And because they're at higher risk, we need to evaluate, could this cancer be outside? Again, could you get a CAT scan, an MRI, to evaluate whether we see any possible lymph node involvement, you know, from in the lymph nodes, and again, that would be the CAT scan or the MRI, and also, could there be a positive bone scan? And even though that bone scan is still gonna be relatively low risk of finding on that, certainly with his PSA of 20, that patient who is at a higher risk because of his high-grade cancer as well as his PSA being elevated, that's a person that it is important for us to evaluate this. And what are we, why are we evaluating all this? We evaluate all this because we want to know what options we have for that patient. We know that if that patient actually still has localized prostate cancer, it's still localized within the prostate, there's an excellent chance that we have all the options in the world for that patient. If it's a really low grade prostate cancer, a low volume, we could potentially follow with active surveillance. But if we start looking on the opposite spectrum, which is that patient with a Gleason 8 or the PSA of 20, that's a patient that we want to be more aggressive with. If we find that that patient unfortunately has metastatic disease and that cancer has already gotten outside of the prostate, we can't cure that patient from localized therapy, at least as a whole. What happens is if the cancer gets outside and it gets the bones, we can't cure them. We can keep them around for a number of years, which is the encouraging news. However, we can't cure them. And so we start looking at other approaches for that patient as opposed to just primarily just a localized therapy. Some prostate cancers are high risk, aggressive, and more likely to spread. Others are low risk, least likely to have bad outcomes. The biopsy says cancer, but current diagnostic tools provide limited information about how aggressive a man's individual disease is. So most men decide to treat prostate cancer immediately. Once treated, many men experience serious long-term side effects, like incontinence and sexual impotence. Immediate treatment isn't always needed, but right now, a man can't be sure if his cancer is the kind that is likely to require treatment or if he's okay to wait for now. What if there was a test that could determine how aggressive prostate cancer is? Genomic Health is developing a new test to do just that. By reviewing the underlying biology of the tumor and using genes from multiple biologic pathways, the test can predict the aggressiveness of prostate cancer when diagnosed allowing a man to make a more informed treatment decision with confidence, taking care of himself with more information and greater peace of mind.